We're often asked the question uh, which platform it makes sense to use for profiling, uh, be it array or sequencing. Um, almost always cost is the biggest factor, so you'll primarily need to strike a balance between cost and performance. And additionally, uh, the individual goals of your project will also heavily influence which method makes more sense. In this video, we're going to discuss uh, which method makes more sense for which situation, and why in some situations both methods make sense and they can even complement each other. Before making the decision to go with RNA sequencing or microarrays, several questions must be answered. First, are the practical questions such as, what genome information is available, if any, for my species of interest? How much data analysis expertise do I have or have access to? And perhaps most important, how much money do I have to spend? Equally as important factors in making this decision are the goals of the project. Beyond just measuring differences in gene expression between samples, is accurate absolute quantitation important? Is it important to discover novel genes? Do we want to be able to distinguish isoforms and the expression difference between the isoforms? Am I interested in transcripts likely to be expressed at very low or very high levels? And finally, am I interested in structural information such as alternative splicing and gene fusions? Once these questions have been answered, you can be confident you have selected the appropriate method to achieve success in your project. Before comparing methods, let's take a moment to discuss the similarities between the two. First, both platforms demonstrate a high run-to-run -run reproducibility, and there is a high correlation between gene expression profiles generated by the two methods. However, both platforms suffer from background noise when attempting to measure very low expression values. Another very important similarity between the two is that both methods are governed by the same statistical principles. Neither platform can generate statistically relevant data without appropriate experimental design that incorporates biological replicates. There is no statistical significance for a difference measured between two samples by either method. Last, both methods suffer from biases. For microarrays, the biases such as variant are well understood. For sequencing, a much newer method, biases have been observed. However, the source of these biases are not yet well understood. Microarrays are a robust, reliable method proven over decades of use. Over the years, we have become comfortable both with operating this technology and analyzing the results. Although initially a question, a general consensus has emerged on the major methods for processing the data, which can now be performed on any PC. Despite dropping NGS prices, microarrays are still more economical and yield higher throughput, providing significant advantages when working on a big project with a large number of samples. Microarrays are designed with hybridization probes, which must be based on prior sequence knowledge. Therefore, they cannot detect structural variations or discover novel genes or transcripts. The hybridization strategy of microarrays limit their sensitivity, which means they cannot detect differences in expression between very similar sequences such as isoforms. Additionally, they can only produce relative expression levels, not absolute quantitation values. The sequencing strategy provides a comprehensive view of the transcriptome because it is not dependent on any prior sequence knowledge. Instead, every single transcript in the sample is sequenced, known or unknown. This enables the identification of structural variations such as gene fusions and alternative splicing events, as well as novel genes and transcripts. Sequencing data can also be reanalyzed when new discoveries are made whereas microarrays would need to be rerun in order to take advantage of new sequence information. Unlike microarrays, which measure probe intensities, sequencing quantifies discrete digital read counts aligned to a particular sequence. Because you are sequencing each individual transcript, the technology is inherently more sensitive and superior in detecting low abundance transcripts and differentiating biologically critical isoforms. In fact, 
The dynamic range is tunable and potentially unlimited through continuous sequencing. Because RNA sequencing is a cutting-edge technology, it is inherently new to most researchers. And although the data output is potentially much richer in information, this means the analysis is much, much more complex. In fact, specialized computing infrastructure and personnel are required to take advantage of the additional biological information in this data. Although there are a wealth of tools being rapidly developed for RNA sequencing analysis, there is not yet one standard protocol which makes comparing results challenging. Sequencing generates so much data that just storing such large amounts of data is itself more challenging. For large file sizes, they can be difficult to share and costly to store, especially for large projects encompassing many samples. Finally, despite the dropping cost of sequencing, based on current technology, the cost of performing a microarray-based experiment will be less than a comparable sequencing-based experiment in most cases. In many instances, the best strategy may be a combination of technologies that maximizes the effectiveness of each while overcoming the limitations of the other. For example, RNA sequencing yields results that broadly cover all transcripts from samples of various temporal and spatial origins without the need for any prior sequence knowledge. However, due to the relatively higher cost and lower throughput nature of sample handling and data analysis, the systematic follow-through of the sequencing discoveries for validation and or profiling in a reproducible manner could take a long time and be expensive by repetitive sequencing. Custom microarrays can be effective follow-up tools to capture comprehensive sequencing information and to systematically profile and compare gene expression based on sequencing findings rapidly, reproducibly, and cost-effectively. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, we hope you found this video helpful. If you have any additional questions, you're welcome to call us or even reach us via email.